Welcome to Investigate Joe Rogan, the most important podcast ever, where I fact check claims made on the Joe Rogan experience. Today I will be looking into episode 1492 of JRE featuring Jocko. And unlike the Tulsi Gabbard episode of JRE, which included Jocko and I did cover, I think that this is a topic where it is in fact worthwhile to hear from Jocko and his particular career history of training Marines and also doing jiu-jitsu. For once, I feel as though jiu-jitsu is actually relevant to current events and not in some sort of roundabout way. Like, oh wow, you know, this trade war, you know, it really reminds me of uh, like economic jiu-jitsu. Or like, oh, you know, this this trade war, it's really a lot like stand-up comedy. No, not like that. Like this is actually directly relevant this time. However, we also get a lot of Jocko comments on other matters, such as his seemingly sincere hope that The Rock will become president. The episode begins, as many an episode of JRE does, by discussing cancel culture and liberals and such things. And Rogan says that a soccer player got fired when his wife tweeted, hashtag all lives matter, and the announcer for the Kings got fired for tweeting the same thing. But this is only partially true. Grant Napier did indeed get fired uh, from his announcer job for tweeting All Lives Matter. But LA Galaxy player Alexander Katai's wife did not say All Lives Matter. She actually went on Instagram and urged police to kill protesters and called them disgusting cattle. So... Regardless of how you feel about firing someone because something their wife did, this is this is very different than just saying all lives matter. You know, that's actually pretty bad. But if getting into trouble for something your spouse did becomes a sort of trend moving forward, you know, all I all I can say is that Eva Braun better watch out. Her historical legacy might not hold up so well in this new sort of cancel culture era if this becomes the norm. But they don't talk about liberals forever. They do get to the the real issue at hand here. And Jocko says that he thinks a big part of the problem is that cops only get like two to four hours of combative training per year. And police academy is only three months long. So the best resource I could find for fact-checking this was the Census of Law Enforcement Training Academies that the Department of Justice conducted in 2013. And it turns out that the average amount of time it takes to become a police officer in the U.S. is 34 weeks, or about 8 months. So Jocko is wrong about that. And while I couldn't find any information about how much sort of combat training cops get per year after their initial training, after police academy, the census did have information about what combat training they get during their police academy training. So the census said that, quote, major training areas included operations, firearms, self-defense, and use of force, 168 hours, self-improvement, and legal education. So 168 hours is dedicated to the use of force, which would be like four work weeks. So there's like a month of what Jocko would call combatives training. And then what goes on in that 168 hours or work a month? Well, it says, quote, an average of 168 hours per recruit were required for training on weapons, defensive tactics, and the use of force. Recruits spent most of this time on firearms, 71 hours, and self-defense, 60 hours, training. Recruits also spent an average of 21 hours on the use of force, 
which may have included training on agency policies, de-escalation tactics, and crisis intervention strategies. Nearly all recruits received training on weapon retention, verbal command presence, and ground fighting. Most recruits were also trained on pressure point control and speed cuffing. So from what I can tell based on this census, only 21 hours of training are dedicated to preparing cops for a physical fight. In those eight months of training, that's all they get on the subject. So while Jocko was wrong about the length of police school, he is basically right that very little time is spent on this sort of training. I have spent more time playing Street Fighter than the average cop has spent training for a street fight. Think about that. And while eight months is much longer than the three months that Jocko believed was the average, it's less than police are trained in other countries. So is eight months enough? I'm not sure, but I think there's a good argument to be made that it is not. Jocko also said that a lot of places do not have minimum physical requirements to become a cop, but from what I can tell, this is not true. It seems like everywhere has some sort of physical requirements. A bit later on, a bit less insightfully, Jocko says that comparing police on black violence to black on black violence is like comparing a UFC referee KOing one of the fighters to the actual fight itself. The implications of this analogy are hilarious, as it is basically saying that black people shooting each other is simply the you know, natural and acceptable state of affairs, but police shooting people is unacceptable. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to give Jocko the benefit of the doubt here and assume that this is not what he really meant. But I think this is sort of an unhelpful analogy. <laughs> also around this time, Rogan says that Minneapolis has already defunded the police in response to this issue, uh, which is not true. They have not done this. Um, there are obviously people in Minneapolis who do want to do this, but nothing has come of it as of yet. Also in this episode, relating to crime, Rogan recommends the documentary Cocaine Cowboys, a documentary which he has recommended in many other episodes as well. And because he's always recommending it, and because I enjoy the game Hotline Miami, I did actually watch this documentary. And it's actually pretty bad. It has very low production values. It feels like it was made for TV. The editing is terrible. There's almost no actual footage of anything interesting. It's basically a PowerPoint slide with like a few interviews with drug dealers thrown in. Uh, I do not recommend it. You can watch it for the aesthetic if you want, but it is not a good documentary. It is not informative or insightful or well-made or anything. Don't, don't watch Cocaine Cowboys, honestly. It's kind of a waste of time. Now, later on, Rogan wonders aloud if Jesse Ventura was the last independent governor. He was not. Charlie Crist became governor of Florida in 2007. But he also doesn't really count because he ran as a Republican, and then he became an independent while he was in office. So that's sort of a different thing. And there's also Lincoln Chafe, or Chafe. I don't know how to pronounce his name, really. But he became governor of Rhode Island in 2011. And he actually did win as an independent. But he also doesn't really count because he, he actually switched to become a Democrat while he was in office. So he's like a reverse of the other guy. And then Bill Walker became governor of Alaska in 2014. And although he was an independent, he was endorsed by Democrats. 
So do these do these three people count? I don't really know. Should this give independence more or less hope? I also don't really know. But there you go. There, there's the facts. Not just Jesse Ventura. Jocko, talking about an older plague, the Black Plague, says that it was caused by people getting rid of all the cats, who they thought were the cause of the plague, but they weren't. It was the rats, and so then this drove up the rat population. And then, you know, that was bad since rats were the actual cause. But this is not true, it turns out. Some people say that the Pope issued an order to kill all the cats because they were satanic, and that that caused the plague. But this is just not what happened. There is an obscure writing where this whole myth sort of comes from, where the Catholic Church at the time said that Satanists were using cats in their rituals. But it was not in order saying, all right, peasants, it's time to start killing cats. Get out there with your daggers and get those cats. That never happened. Now, of the modern plague that is going on at this very moment, Rogan says that who said it is rare for asymptomatic people to infect others, and that who also said you don't have to wear a mask. And this is partially true. I couldn't find anything from who ever saying that asymptomatic people rarely infect others. He is wrong about this. However, it is true that initially who said he didn't have to wear a mask, except under really certain conditions. And then later, they changed their recommendation and said, you should wear a mask pretty much whenever you're in any sort of, you know, public place or around people. So it seems like initially they, they were behind the ball, but they have since come around. In this episode, Jocko also actually explains why it is that he sleeps so little. He actually says that it is because he knows there's bad people training harder than him, and the powers of the world won't let him sleep. He really says this. So, you know, I know I made, I kind of made fun of Jocko and the whole waking up super early thing in previous episodes, but now I just feel bad. You know, this is a man who is haunted by serious demons. He is crushed by the weight of the world every day, and he cannot sleep. And I, I'm sitting here, you know, making fun of him. And I feel bad now. The rest of the podcast, they just talk about hunting and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And one thing I would just like to say about this is, you know, they, they hype up jiu-jitsu endlessly, of course. You know, going so far as to say it should be mandatory for children to learn in school. But then they also just sort of casually drop all these stories about people they know who have been severely injured by jiu-jitsu. Like Jocko tells that story about he, he just like casually broke someone's neck on accident. And neither of them even think of, think of this as being that weird. They think it's pretty funny. It's like, ah, yeah, this, this guy has like a serious you know, injury now for the rest of his life. And I, obviously I get that, like this doesn't happen to everyone. But, you know, I feel like maybe, just maybe, because of things like this, jiu-jitsu does not need to be taught to children in school. <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that bold statement. That is all I have to say about episode 1,492 of JRE. It has been longer than usual since the last episode of Investigate Joe Rogan, but it's only partially my fault, since there were a bunch of uninvestigatable episodes since Crystal Ball and Sagar. There was like some chefs, like some pasta chefs, and then there was like a five-hour episode with some literally who band that like no one's heard of. Uh, but anyway, thanks for listening. I hope you learned something. I hope you come back. I hope you tell all your friends about Investigate Joe Rogan so that we can all investigate Joe Rogan together.